You know, I didn't wait for the sun disk this morning because the sky is absolutely gorgeous. Just let's zero in here for the silver lining. You know that expression, the silver lining in the cloud? It's just gorgeous. There's still a little bit of Mount Hermon, but it's probably not worth trying to focus in with. Uh, it's too hazy. Earlier this morning when I was out there for the swim, it was a little clearer. Not sure if you'd call that a silver lining or it's between silver and gold. Maybe because of the white. So we can expect the sun to emerge there, God willing. Signs of a new day. Oh, by the way, I found out what happened yesterday with the with the inability to to get the the 4G. So the simple reason was it came up for something else. I was I, I was I wanted to listen to the gospel exegesis uh, for that Australian guy, and uh, it was it was. Uh, and a little notification came up that cellular data was turned off. So that's the only reason I wasn't able to move yesterday. Cellular data was turned off and obviously I had done that accidentally probably and didn't realize and wasn't smart enough to realize but these things are called smartphones for people like me so they can tell me what I did wrong or what I needed to do. So people, we got some amazing, amazing thoughts today in the, in the readings, really, really beautiful. And you'd often wonder, at least the thought could arise, like how come in a time of such corruption, a guy like Jeremiah appears, Jeremiah the prophet. And, you know, there was obviously major, major stuff going on, like really, really wayward, uh, pious Jewish tradition, as far as I understand. I've never read this. I just heard this from, from probably guides and, and scholars that at the time of, and it's actually in the Bible itself, sure, at the, even today, apparently pious Jew, Jews uh, believe this, that... The exile was caused by the utter corruption. There goes the sun, there comes the sun. It's all right. So it was caused by utter corruption. Also the highest leadership uh, at the temple and in the king's palace where children were offered in sacrifice to Moloch in the Gehenna Valley. And that's why the Gehenna Valley has its incredible aura of evil. And so, it was proverbial to associate Gehenna with, with uh, eternal fire, damnation, um, horrendous, you know. Uh, like the normal thing that a guide will say to most groups that's politically much easier to say, politically correct, viable, is that uh, Gehenna has its name because of the garbage burning, which also you know, it doesn't make it the most desirable place for a family picnic with little children, the smell of the garbage and, and the vermin and and the, all the waste around. And so that image of the garbage burning is, is also valid. You know, every city needs a place where the garbage is dumped and burned and so on. And then the other, there's a, there's another explanation is given as well. Um, well, obviously, that the the uh, Canaanites before there we go into the sun. This fellow with his paddleboard. So another another uh, bit was that the Canaanites did it, but the, obviously, you know, the the maximum expression of that would have been. When the chosen people themselves, uh, some of their leadership stooped to that level. 
and that can only spell disaster. So I'm sorry for getting into that so much. I'm basically just trying to make a point that there was very intense corruption of morality. And, and how does somebody like Jeremiah rise up in that situation? How, how do we have such an incredible prophet of truth and how does he persevere? How does he, how does he manage to, to continue shining as bright as the sunlight, as bright as a fire at nighttime in the dark? And I think today's reading has some amazing lines in there and how he is qualified to be a prophet, qualified by God, you know? It's, it's not from his own mere talent, but it is also implies his response to be an authentic voice for God, which is the meaning of prophet, uh, to a spokesperson for God, to, to relay God's word, to speak on behalf of God, to speak on behalf, that's the, the meaning of the word. And there's one line particularly caught my attention as pivotal in there. There are a lot of other words then that, that belong to this whole direction of the focus of a person's mind and heart and soul. And it's very applicable for today, I think. It seems that in our times, it's, it would be very good. And I'll just read the line for you. Maybe we'll read it twice. It's just so good. Let me just find it now. He has such a passion for the word of God and he devours it, you know? So this is the line. If you bring forth the precious without the vile, you shall be my mouthpiece. If you bring forth the precious without the vial, you shall be my mouthpiece. Now, I just like to relate that to another experience that I had. I think I mentioned this a couple of times over the last few years. And one day there was a bar mitzvah in our synagogue. And a rather secular Jewish man, at least that's the way I had appreciated him, a guide, um, had arranged with me to welcome a U.S. A tour agent who brought significant numbers of people to the Holy Land. And the guide wanted to introduce him to Magdala, and he asked me to be available. But just before that, before the site opened, a Jewish family had come for a bar mitzvah. And... So at the moment, I w the, the ceremony was over and this guy was arriving, so I just went to the gate to receive him. And when we were coming down the steps close to our synagogue, that's when the, guide, the, the rabbi was coming out carrying the scroll uh, with great propriety and it was so wonderfully decorated with wood, carved wood and precious metals and then the, as we just kind of coincided on the stairs, they were, the rabbi was coming up and the agent and the guide and I were going down toward the synagogue, down the steps in the visitor center. And I just noticed all of a sudden the guide reaches out and kisses the scroll. And I was very impressed. Uh, he obviously didn't have direct contact with the scroll itself, but with the, with the cover around it. And showing that amazing sign of affection uh, to the scroll. And, and obviously then this man revealed his heart by doing that. But the, the reason for that devotion is because it's the most precious object the Jewish people had because the word of God coming straight from God's mouth is on the scroll. I was very touched by that explanation. And here we have this word to Jeremiah. 
If you bring forth the precious without the vial, you shall be my mouthpiece. There, there are vile things that happen in our world. We had a neighbor, very, you know, people that would never have done anything more than grade school if they even finished it. And when I was a little child, and I remember my mom often quoting a word that this neighbor spoke, on, and it was, anybody can bring the bad out of people, like to get them to show their bad side. You know, you can get people angry, you can get people to be bitter, you can get people to go into to bad things, but it takes a great person to bring the good out of people. You know, if people are in a bad situation, uh, they had a bad experience with somebody, it's not so difficult to get people to talk badly, to repeat that. But to get people to talk good about others who are in a difficult, to get, to get people to, to express good while they're in bad situations, that's a great person. What a beautiful way uh, to live. And when we see bad things in politics, in matters of faith, in matters of family, in business world, in media, to be able to bring out the good. If you bring out the precious and not the vile, and there's plenty of vile. It's not to be denied, it's there. Sometimes it has to be addressed. But when sometimes people have such anger, they become totally enmeshed in the vile and they don't have the high ground, the distance to put it in its place and to bring out the good. And the prophet had to bring out the good, the greatness of God's love. Obviously, there was word of punishment for evil, but to bring out the greatness of God's love, because that's why we have the prophets. At the end, the consolation of God and the correction, like parents with children that are going a very difficult path, uh, the, the foundation and the purpose of everything is to bring out the good. Worldview, a redemptive faith perspective, not a perspective of condemnation. And that's why then we can have a line like Paul has, which is in total continuity with this uh, approach. And he says to overcome evil doing good. To bring out the precious, not the vile. And you see somebody is totally burned in an accident and that's precious life, and it's horrible to see the circumstances of what firemen do going into buildings, what first uh, responders do to help people that are, uh, their bodies are so damaged, the medical world, but then especially education. Children trapped in migration and broken families and in circumstances that are horrible and abusive circumstances to to risk the precious, to bring out the precious without the vile. Amazing, isn't it? I just love it. And I think there's a grace that he had. And actually the line just before that was his own repentance, because we can't be in cahoots with evil. We have to draw a line. We have to say no to certain things we have to our life has to be renewed and reconciled and then we will also be free it's a path of, of holiness i invite you all to pray for all those who speak about god's word who speak it parents to their children teachers and classes catechists coaches with sometimes they're in difficult situations with kids that might lack certain levels of formation and backgrounds and how much good they can do. Also the culture of having quality language. There are people who have, who take the, the liberty to, to use language that's uncouth, that's foul, 
at the famous F words that are used so abundantly. It, it doesn't speak of, you know, when comedians have to stoop that low, you know, you say, well, where is their comedy skill? Where's their level? And there are wonderful entertainers that don't have to put their hand in to get a scoop from the cesspool of history and society and communities in order to allow people to have a great laugh, which we need. We need to be able to laugh well, to bring out the precious without the vile. So many applications. And maybe we can think about the way we talk about our neighbors, about family members, and even then about politicians who do terrible things, leaders, church leaders, uh, how to be able, you know, you remember when, when um, was it Lot? He was, was it Lot? Who was the one that was drunk? And, and uh, the sons covered his nakedness. I think that's kind of connected here. It's the ability to honor the good God has created and the ability to, it's not to cover up in the sense that, um, I don't know how to say that now, I haven't uh, developed that thought well, but to, it's not a cover up to get people out of consequences of their actions but it's the idea of the ability to redeem for the good. It's not to cheat uh, justice, but it's to, to help people to get back on their feet. Well, I don't know, I just got very turned down by that, so there's a lot more in this, in this reading today from chapter 15 of Jeremiah, that's so beautiful. He's a bit ne negative and downcast that he was born because he has a hard time representing God's word, but he had that interior commitment to good. And if he had fault in that, he would ask forgiveness. And so that, that's, that's holiness, and that's the path of holiness. None of us is perfect, and we all have to deal with our own brokenness and by God's grace that's all possible so really I, I'd love to do more uh, God is my refuge on the day of distress and sure enough Jeremiah had plenty of distress and sure enough God was his refuge and then that's our our psalm which is Psalm uh, 59 and then we have the beautiful treasure hidden in the field the parable two very sharp parables and the precious pearl and the ability to sell everything to acquire it. Again, the precious pearl, recognizing the precious and letting go of all the rest in order to rescue the precious. What a way to go. I just want to find a spot here to get a nice view of the sun. It'll be easier to finish up. So people, wonderful to be with you. Here we have Tiberius at the end of this lane here down there. The southern cliffs of Mount Arbel. And there I think we'll say goodbye here even though the sun is behind the clouds again. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Have a wonderful day. And let's bring out a lot more of the precious.